I'd like to dedicate the series to all the seekers and searchers on the path of discovering their own inner truths. It's not an easy road being in an emotional pioneer. Awakening to your own inner emotional guidance system should be a gift, and yet for me it has often felt like a curse at times, especially when I didn't fully understand what was unfolding deep inside myself. The Way I Feel is a series I created to explore and document the deep and often inconsistent emotional waves that I've experienced all my life. It has been an ongoing struggle to understand and sort out exactly what happens to me when I experience not only my own emotions, but the emotional energy of others. Through a series of very interesting events, I recently discovered that I'm not only deeply empathic, but also possess a deep intuition about how other people feel. Truthfully, I thought everyone had access, access to the same information that I did. Turns out that is actually not true at all. Collectively, we have all agreed to the words we use to describe our feelings like happy, sad, mad, angry. We use these simple words to describe complex combinations of many different emotional states. The truth is, most of us have absolutely no clue how to name the real feelings going on inside of us. Why? Because what we feel can be a variety of emotions and experiences we draw upon to feel that particular feel. One word descriptors are not at all able to convey the true essence of what is going on inside of you. I learned at a very young age to ignore my emotions. I learned that it is a weakness to cry. I was taught that it was shameful to express myself through tears. I was taught to fear the very thing that was designed to be the, my internal guidance system for what is correct for me. For over 40 years, I collected not only my tears, but the tears of others and stored them inside my body. I pushed them into my stomach and then I pushed them into my heart. And when I ran out of room there, I flooded the world around me with a thunderstorm of hurt. It was vicious and hurtful for myself and for many of the people close to me at that time. In 2019, my marriage ended abruptly. The proverbial hammer came down hard onto my heart. It was bitter and brutal. I thought I knew heartbreak. I was wrong. I felt the very essence of who I thought I was completely shatter in a way that I knew I would never be able to put it back together again. The only option I had was to build something new, and the only way I was going to be able to do that was to go on a deep dive into myself and figure out a way to release all the emotional energy I had swallowed over the years. It was an ugly, scary, tangled mess of hurt, and I was terrified. I've lived many lives in this one tiny human experience. I've experienced what some would call a troubled childhood, so I am no stranger to the dark side of life. However, I've always been able to maintain a sense of innocence or the ability to bounce back without feeling bitter or jaded. This time was different. This time I wanted to die. I wanted to figure out a way to disappear forever. I felt a deep sense of loss and shame. I felt alone. I had absolutely no clue how to get myself back to feeling good. I still find it gut-wrenching to sit in the hopelessness I felt during that time. I would gotten so far off my path that I could not remember who I really was. Painting's always been my happy place. I decided the only thing I could do was figure out how to paint what I was feeling. When I painted, my mind stopped, and I quickly learned that I was able to tap into my powder keg of emotional energy and release it. That is how the Little Heart series was born. It became the first vehicle for me to express all those uncried cries of the little boy inside of me. Through the creation of that series, I was able to connect and release oceans of trauma, one painting at a time. Over the past two years, I have literally cried one million tears. There was so much sadness inside my heart, I cried and I cried and I cried. There was a moment I thought I would never recover from the hurt. It was my monsoon season and the rain almost drowned me. But then something incredible and an unexpected happened to me. I felt my heart awaken with an inner wisdom and love for myself that I'd never experienced before. My heart reached out to me and wrapped my very own hands around my face. My hands wiped away my tears, but you see, they weren't my hands anymore. There was an intelligence and a force guiding them that was beyond the grasp of my mind. My heart extended to me a branch of unconditional self-love. I used that branch to pull myself out of the half-drained 
emotional swamp. I felt a brilliant white light unfold and start to emanate from the very core of my being. The God in me awoke and blossomed. I felt hope in my heart again, and I was grateful. I had found myself again. And with that, I humbly present to you my new series, The Way I Feel, Self-Portraits of an Expanding Consciousness. This is a continuation of the Little Heart series. I see it as more of an adult view on the sophisticated nature of how emotions actually work. Emotions and feelings are complex, individual, and multifaceted, and a gift if you let it be. My work and I are but a mirror. Look deep into my heart. What do you see? I invite you to go find yourself. Sit with each of these pieces and observe the feelings that come up inside of you. What you see and feel will say a lot about you and where you are in regards to your emotional development. Your feelings are the puzzle pieces back to who you really are. Think of these as a living journal of where I have been emotionally. Have you been there too? These are the songs of my heart. I've learned that the emotions that emotions and feelings are the source of my power and wisdom in this world, and they're the source of yours too. Thank you.